We got classic dystopian novel here today. Hello, full plot questers. It is I, Aaron, the plot quester, and today we got this book, Fahrenheit 451, by Ray Bradbury himself. And well, let's get right on to it. Fire, baby. So, the main character is named Guy Montag, and he is a fireman. And in this futuristic dystopian world that I don't really appreciate, Firemen don't put out fires. They start fires. Why do they start fires? They basically look around and they get reports for the existence of uh, one of one of these things or one of these things, as in books. And they burn books because apparently that's illegal in this world. Yay, what a great premise. I'm so excited. No, I wasn't. I really wasn't. And then uh, this guy, Guy Montag, he's sort of kind of brainwashed to this life of burning books and having a flamethrower and just this really blank life without any almost any emotion then he meets this girl named clarice and she is a teenager and she she asks a lot of cool questions like like oh uh, are you happy or do you love anyone in your life truly and all these really blunt honest questions almost philosophical questions awakens our friend guy and he starts to think is the life that i am living really meaningful what am i doing with myself and he starts to get this insatiable curiosity for the books that he's burning that he had been burning for a long time and this is also triggered by the fact that a grandmother or an old woman old lady wanted to get burned with her books rather than just handing the books over and she started he started to think what's so important about these books and he starts to keep a secret stash of them. Then Beatty, Captain Beatty, the captain of his fire force, who is a pretty pretty smart but also kind of evil man, I guess. And he, he comes up to him and says like, Hey, I know you're keeping books and it's natural. And you can read through them, but they won't, they'll just confuse you. So I'll give you 24 hours, read through them, satisfy your curiosity, then turn them in so we can burn them. That's what he says. And basically, he, he, has, he stays up all night and day reading, however, discovers almost nothing, however, still has this curiosity about books, and his emotions slowly start to return to him. And he remembers that, that someone, he find, wants to find someone that can appreciate um, the value of the books that he has, and he realizes that he met an old English professor named Faber, who, uh, who he met at the park. And so he goes to Faber, he finds Faber, he goes to his house, shows him the books, and together they decide that they're going to revolutionize and fight against the fire force. Meanwhile, Beatty comes ahead, and Beatty obviously finds out the guy keeps a secret stash of books still, and comes along with the entire fire force and makes Montag, or Guy Montag, burn down his own house. And it's pretty terrible, it's not, it's not exactly a great time. And they burn down the entire house and all of the books within it. But thankfully, Montag had kept some books hidden within his, like, within the garden. And he gets the books from the garden and starts to run. And the mechanical hound, which is like a killing machine that hunts down people, is running after a guy. And guy runs, 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 runs through the city, into the countryside, into the river, and throws the mechanical hound or the terrifying needle machine thing away from him and manages to survive. And in the countryside, he meets people like him. People who used to be professors in Cambridge and Oxford. People who has knowledge and the power of books within them, who've each memorized a part or an entire book like him. And they don't exactly have physical books, but if they need to, they can assemble an entire library just from their memories. And Guy is a part of them now. However, right now the country's at war. Nukes drop, the city goes into ashes, and all that's left is ashes and dust, and Guy and his newfound comrades, comrades of books, come together to reveal civilization. That is the book. And fun fact, the um, the author wrote this in six days, which is impressive considering it's pretty good for six days. But also, you can tell that 
some of the um, plot isn't as well written, or at least as detailed as we want it to be. Like, what's up with the war? What kind of war are we having? Or, like, it feels like he, the author sort of made a step in the puddle, you know? Sort of went through the top, uh, skimmed the top of the stuff that they're trying to talk about. Like, for example, the absence of emotions, how books let us feel emotions, rage, frustration, sadness. We feel that through the character. And we feel and we think. It makes us think. And Beatty, the captain of the fire force that burns books, or now every fire force, whatever, I don't care. But Beatty basically tells a Montag that the reason why all of these books were burned, or books are illegal now, was because the minorities said, for example, land of stories is racist for some reason or one other, and that these books got banned. And then the authors started to, you know, be careful not to offend anyone, but that's impossible because everyone has opinions. Then, it'd be, and then the government decided, hey, instead of creating this conflict, let's just burn all of it, everything, which is kind of weird in my opinion. But I think the this version of dystopian government decided, number one, they will create a utopia by removing all sense of conflict from the world which would obviously make people happier, or so they thought. But the absence of strong emotions such as hate, frustration, and conflict means that the opposite cannot truly exist as well, which is love, life, friendship, camaraderie, all these things that Guy felt like he was missing when Clarice, the young girl, asked him the question, do you love anyone? Do you like your life? Are you happy? All these questions made him think and realize that he isn't feeling any of these core emotions. He isn't feeling any of these positive emotions because the opposite doesn't exist and he can't tell what is what. He's just living a life like, I don't know, just lukewarm life. Not, not fiery or cold or, there's no emotion. And I think that is sort of the concept of the book that I really appreciate. But I feel like there could have been some more detail with the plot and how the actual story went. And it's actually a combination of three short stories written by Ray Bradbury, and six days, I mean, that's impressive. And like I just said, it's like that philosophy and that sort of absence of emotion, what, what we should do about it, that kind of thing is really good and it makes you really think. However, I, I just thought that maybe, maybe there could be maybe a tiny little bit more detail with that or maybe some more plot devices within the book that made the situation a little bit more complicated, a little more jaw clenching and makes us think about these philosophies and with different kinds of devices rather than just a mainstream story that's pretty simple to follow. I just wish there were a little bit more complications, you know. That, that's all I wanted to say. I mean, it's, it's a very good book. And that's pretty much all I have to say. If you want to read a classic dystopian novel, you can definitely go for Fahrenheit 451. Of course, there are better alternative, alternatives these days for dystopian because, like, I don't know, Divergence is pretty cool, Hunger Games is pretty cool, um, 1984 is not very cool, um, yeah, so, like, there are a lot of dystopian novels, but this is one of, like, the starters, I guess, or of modern dystopia, I guess, so, I guess you should probably give it a read, it's a very short read as well, so, I'm not saying that you won't enjoy it, but I'm not sure if it'll be, like, oh, top 10 most liked, or something like that, you know? And yeah, it is a very good book. And like always, your plot cluster and the plot cluster. It is a pretty good book. Like I said, those philosophies and those different things that you can think about is truly what makes the book a good book. Even though, like I said, it may be lacking in some more literary devices that make you think about these different philosophies. Have a great day.